Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to my channel. I'm losing my voice because I just filmed a uh, TBR video that was like an hour long, so my voice is feeling it. But we are starting a weekend reading vlog, so let me show you the books that we're going to read because this is a themed reading vlog and I'm so excited for it. Oh gosh. Okay. All right. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I have been running a list of themed vlogs to do for about a year already, but I never do them. And just, uh, I think I forgot when it was, a few weeks ago, maybe it could even been a, it could have been a month, uh, I found out that there was this book that was gonna come out and it sparked my interest in doing one of the themed reading blogs that I had on this list. So the book came out two days ago on the 1st of December and I just received the book in the mail. I've been anticipating this book for a little bit already. I've been dying to read it. It is in my possession. I'm excited. Uh, so let me tell you what the theme for this reading vlog is. We are going to be reading nothing but women in horror fiction, specifically in the indie realm. No. Realm? Really? Yeah, why not? It's horror. So yeah, I'm, I'm super duper duper excited. Let's talk about the books that I will be reading. I hope you guys enjoy the theme of this vlog. I hope you get some recommendations out of it. So, oh my gosh, you guys, I tweeted about this when I bought it uh, on release day and I've been anxiously awaiting its arrival. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. First off, the cover to this just like instantly gripped me. There was people like getting arcs of it and when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh. And I wanted to request an arc, but I'm really trying not to request. Wave, oh my gosh, wave. How exciting by Samantha Kolesnik. Uh, the other book that I wanted to read was True Crime by her. I've had this book here, sitting here, or sitting with me for a really long time and I still haven't read it. I don't know why I'm hesitating. This is one of those books that I know I'm hesitating because I'm gonna fall in love with it, but also because I heard that it's a rough read. So, um, which should, I, I mean, I all of my reads are rough reads, so I don't know why there are some books that I just hesitate with more than others. Uh, if I do have some time at the ending of this vlog, I might sneak it in, but the reason why I decided not to do this one is because I wanna do a variety of authors, and if I would've done this one, it would've been two of the same authors and then another one, so I wanted to do more more of a more of a variety for you guys so wave I mean it's shorter than I thought it was gonna be but this sits at a hundred pages I'm so excited uh, grindhouse books are always like a little bit extreme I mean they're grindhouse horror which hello uh, so I'm super excited. I love Grindhouse books I tend to always end up loving things that they publish so I'm excited. I also believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Grindhouse is owned by a woman. The second book that I want to read, I actually have in ebook form. So it is White Pines by Gemma Amor. I love Gemma Amor. I read Dear Laura by her and loved that book so much. If you guys haven't read that one, I highly recommend it. It was so good. So when I saw that White Pines was available on Kindle Unlimited, I went ahead and did it. I also wanted to have something that was part of Kindle Unlimited on here just for those that actually pay for the service and never use it. Maybe I can entice you to use <laughs> your service because I know that I I, I pay for this service every month and I barely use it. So if you guys don't know, there's a bunch of good horror books under Kindle Unlimited. So take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. And then the third book that I'm going to be reading for this vlog is actually a book that's been on my shelves for a while. Uh, and actually, just kidding. It hasn't been here for a while. I just got it from Silver Shamrock. They just sent it to me last month, if I'm not mistaken. And it is the new Jennifer Salcy book, Dead in the Water. I read Clementine's Awakening, which prompted me to want to go to Savannah which I did I ended up going to Savannah and visiting all the places that were talked about that the actual places that were talked about in the book like um, 
the park. I forget the name of the park already, but I had a really good time. Uh, but I really did enjoy that book. Uh, I, I enjoyed the ending most of all. So uh, like I said, Silver Shamrock just sent this, this book my way. What am I saying? Uh, they just sent this book my way and since it's a known author for me, I thought I would give this one a try as well. So I mean, naturally anticipated what inspired this themed vlog, what pushed me to finally start on this theme vlog waif. We're gonna start with this one. I'm super excited. I'm gonna read to you the synopsis and then we're going to get into reading it. It says, Angela has everything she thought she ever wanted. A successful husband, a lavish house, and a bottomless fortune. I mean, hello. <laughs> But the sight of a strange man in a grocery store one night reawakens her dormant sexuality and soon Angela embarks on a dangerous descent into the world of underground pornography and back alley plastic surgery. As the stakes get higher, long buried memories resurface and Angela finds herself enamored with Rena, a fetish film performer. With some help from a queer gang called The Waves, Angela is forced to make the decision between her unhappy upper class life and the treacherous world of underground film. I hope I'm saying that right, waif. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not, but like... <laughs> so yeah, let's jump into this little bad boy. I'm so excited. Again, this is my first... <laughs> wow. This is my first Samantha Kolesnik book. I hope I'm saying that correct as well. And I'm like very eager because I've heard nothing but praises for this author with true crime specifically and so I'm just I'm eager to dive in so let's do just that hey guys so I just started with waif I got a late start I am only five pages in but I wanted to give a little bit of a first impressions on the book and on the writing being that this is my first Klesnik book um, I am loving the writing. I was a little bit confused, I'm not gonna lie, with the prologue because it's very like in a lyrical, kind of like a, in the dark lyrical kind of sense, but I feel like towards the end of the prologue you sort of, I mean it's written brilliantly. I really loved the prologue to the book. And we're getting into the story of this woman. She is battling um, physical abuse from her husband or she's just battling an abusive marriage. And um, she is explaining how she is sitting at this grocery store. She's sort of people watching and she's sort of thinking about the slap that her husband gave. How it's sort of like invisible to everybody else but she knows is there. And to sort of like calm herself or like distract herself she likes to people watch. So she's sitting outside of a grocery store and she's just watching people. But she's also thinking and she catches herself laughing, which in turn makes her cry about the thoughts that she is having about her husband. She's also thinking about how her mom had been right. Her mom had warned her at the beginning of her, actually on her wedding day, how she did not like how, um, how the husband would put the wife down or fiance or I guess at that point that's already her husband. But she... Almost, you know how we get, well, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation and I'm not talking necessarily only in abuse situations, but like when somebody warns us about something, we sort of like brush it off or it, it sort of makes us, it pushes us away from that person. So that's basically what it did between her and the mom. It sort of pushed her away and sort of like toughened her towards her mom, like her emotions and she didn't listen to her but she's thinking how she wished she would have listened to her because she was completely right how she was always making excuses for the way that her husband was so i'm really liking the writing it's very inviting very gripping um and yeah i just wanted to give you my first impressions uh because i tend to just like read and uh then like i'm 50 pages later and i come and tell you but I'm loving the writing and this is sort of making me want to pick up true crime as well. There are a couple of quotes that I just fell in love with here and I didn't have my little stickers so that also is the reason why I came upstairs is to get my little tabs. One of them that I really really love it says people didn't care about truth they only cared about how the lie appeared and I feel like that is so prevalent right now so on point. I just love that part so so much and I thought it just hit home. Fantastic I'm hooked. Uh, the lighting is horrible and 
the sound is probably horrific because I am filming this on my phone. So please excuse it, but I've been sitting here reading Waif. I am on page 80. I have this much left. And holy shit. What the fuck? This book is crazy. It's sad. It's twisted. It's... And... I can't say too much other than what I have said already from the beginning with the woman. Her name is Angela, actually, and her abusive relationship and meeting this man. She eventually meets this man that we hear about in the synopsis at the grocery store that night and shit just spirals out of control after that between her and her husband, like, I, <laughs> what? This is fantastic, it's sick, but the writing, the storytelling is exceptional, like, <laughs> exceptional this has so much depth in it um and so much <sighs> you guys all i can say about this is that you have to read it 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 has so much wrapped up into this one story and so many layers that it's just hard to describe really so i finished waif and i loved it so much i didn't know what to expect from this story i didn't know what uh turn it would take especially after reading the synopsis and although the synopsis is very true to the story it's also very different um it was like i said earlier it was insane and it was the kind of book that I just could not put down. Like I said earlier, it has so many layers to it and so much depth. And really, it's about finding your people. It's about finding acceptance. It's about finding a place to belong to. Uh, Kolesnik's writing... I would venture to say is probably some of the best that I have read because she could easily land on a favorite author for me. I feel like my an my anticipation was, was worth it. It was worth the wait. It was worth the anticipating and I just, I absolutely loved it. Definitely, definitely, definitely recommend five freaking stars you guys okay so i started white pines this morning i've been sitting here reading for like about 45 minutes and i did not realize that this book was 400 pages plus i thought it was a novella <laughs> oops but i am loving it so much number one this play this takes place in scotland scotland is like my bucket list my holy grail place to visit it's number one on my list i don't know what it is that i have such a fascination with with scotland that i just want to go i want to go to scotland i want to go to ireland like i don't know why it's just something that i'm just dying and itching to go so whenever i see a book that's set in scotland or ireland or any of these places i'm just immediately drawn to them I didn't know this was this took place in Scotland, so I'm like a pig in shit right now. I am 45 pages in, so I have 400 pages left, but I am hooked. I'm loving the writing. I have read a Gemma a more book already. Um, I read Dear Laura and was obsessed with it. Like her writing is incredible. It flows so easily and it just reads so, so easy. But I needed to share my surprise on this book being 400 plus pages. I did not expect that, but I will say it's going by pretty quickly. Hey guys, so it is a few days later. I haven't updated the vlog in a little bit. Just, it's been rough. 
I have had... I have had a rough few uh, days, I don't know why, just emotionally and mentally I've been pretty down. I mean I have a feeling but I don't know that it's solely because of this that I'm feeling like this but I do have an update on White Pines. I am loving this book but at the same time I'm like wanting to for it to move on i i think i said this already but i was pretty surprised that the book is like 400 plus pages i thought i was getting into a novella and i should have checked that out before i even started it because my whole thought process on this blog was to have novella sized books because I wanted it to be like a weekend reading blog but it's turned into something more. So far we are following this girl Meg, Megan and she at the beginning of the book she's standing outside the fence to this island or this land she keeps on saying and she continues to go there every year of that one time they tell they keep telling her or they keep saying don't go to this place just stay away from the place but she's being stubborn and she goes every year on the date of something I can't remember what the something is and she keeps going and she keeps going but everything is the same everything is quiet you know that there's some missing people but this one particular time that she goes she, something happens and she's able to rescue someone from this place where a long time ago people went missing and so that's the prologue and then we jump back to her how she ended up at this place we know that she is just one day at home her husband gets home and just basically tells her listen i'm not in love with you anymore we're done and she goes through all these emotions on the same day where she's like screaming, throwing, crying, pleading. And until she's just like, you know what? She, I guess she like stops and reflects and she's like, I'm done. And so she packs up her stuff and she leaves. But she's like, where am I going to go? Well, it just so happens that that's, that same day, she ends up getting a letter that she has inherited this house in Scotland, which is about 18 hours from where she is. So when she's packing up her stuff to leave, that she's in the car, she's like, she's like, where am I going to go? And she thinks about this house that her grandmother left her. And so she drives 18 hours straight and makes it to this house. Now this house is old. Uh, she remembers being there a handful of times in her youth. Uh, and it's old. I mean, so much so that the meter that runs the electricity is by coins. You feed it coins. And there's no light. It's at like, it's almost, it almost serves like a lighthouse, but it's not. Um, and it's on the corner on the most end point of this area. I can't remember the names. And when she gets there, she realizes that the, that the electricity is done with feeding the meter and she has like no coins on her. So she decides to walk to the post office, which is a little bit away from the house. And she's like, maybe it just will serve me good to walk. She's been feeling weird. There's this island off of where her house is that she can see that's just giving her a headache. And she's just like, I'm gonna walk after, after driving 18 hours, mind you. I would be like, no, I need to go to sleep. And just everything in that town is weird. She sees weird things, the people, she meets the lady from the post office and she ends up telling her, don't be deceived by the island, don't let it trick you. And she says some other weird stuff that just has her like, what in the world? So we're just trying to find out what this island is, what happens at the beginning of the book, why is everybody missing? I'm loving the writing style, I'm loving the um the story itself i just wish that it would truck along a little bit more i am 160 pages into the book right now and we're just getting to the island um and we still don't know anything i'm loving the titles of the chapters is another thing that's really grabbing me and i don't want to tell you because those chapter names are sort of well especially the one that i'm in now the one that really caught my attention is a little bit of a spoiler to the story in itself so i don't want to spoil anything but the chapter names i'm loving i mean and just the name of the book white pines white pines is 
this island is surrounded, encircled by these white pines that she says that are almost like supernatural of how perfect and like exactly alike each one of them are to one another so we just came up to the white pines in the book so yeah i think i feel like it's taking a little bit too long to get to the point but at the same time i'm liking the journey there even though i'm complaining that it's taking a little too long i'm really enjoying the journey if that makes sense i know i always contradict myself but that's just i, I mean it's just how I'm feeling about the book. Hey guys, it is much, much later. I'm talking weeks. So I had ended up finishing White Pines um, and I never came back to update you, although I thought I did. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I thought I had recorded me talking about White Pines, uh, but the last that I spoke about it on the last clip, which you guys just saw, which was actually a couple weeks ago, um, I was talking about how I was going to pick up the audiobook. Uh, I did end up re uh, picking up the audiobook and I did finish listening to it. I ended up giving White Pines three stars, but to be completely honest with you, other than what I just saw of me talking in the last clip um just to refresh myself on what i had told you guys i liked it uh but i think the book took a turn in a direction that i just was not feeling it's a little bit cosmic horror -y and there are times that just cosmic horror doesn't work for me it's not my preferred subgenre to read uh but i have so i have liked some cosmic horrors but in this one I don't know the ending just left me kind of like confused to me it was just like not all over the place per se because it wasn't really confusing cosmic horror can be confusing sometimes it really wasn't confusing but it left much to be desired for me and in my opinion but as always the writing was amazing I think that Gemma Amore's writing is just great it's just that this particular subject or just subgenre is not my favorite uh it's already January 2nd uh the last time we spoke I think it was the first week of December Christmas passed and New Year's passed and here we are so I have decided what my third and final book for this reading vlog is going to be Ladies of Horror Fiction has this chapter challenge every year where they challenge you to start the year off with an a horror book written by a lady, by a woman. And so perfect timing to continue this vlog. I have decided to pick up Antioch by Jessica Leonard. Um, this is just the book that I've had on my shelf since February. It's It was in our Nightworms February 2021 box and it has just been staring at me. This cover has just been calling out to me for almost a year, a month shy of a year and perfect timing perfect timing to pick it up i read the first chapter already and was hooked um so here we are following it's the town of antioch and there is these murders happening these women are being savagely murdered and they are dubbing this killer vlad the impaler uh because of the way that they find the murder victims and so I haven't gotten to any of those parts yet, but we do know that at the beginning of the book, this woman, Bess, she is going or she's coming home from a date with this guy, Greg, and Greg is like, hey, do you want me to walk you inside? Make sure that everything is safe in there. And that's how they bring upon this murderer that has been killing women. And he's like, you just never know if he might be in there. Let me protect you kind of thing. So she's like, all right. So he goes and makes sure that her house is safe and he finds this radio and she starts telling him how she has this hobby of just listening in on the radio. And we get into this whole like conspiracy theories behind Amelia Earhart. She is just obsessed with it and what got her into listening to the radio um, was this story about Amelia Earhart, how there was this woman and she was listening in and she swears that she heard Amelia Earhart transmit a radio um, SOS call and so they're talking about all of all of that and I just I absolutely love that I thought it was just so gripping it's uh, I love all kinds of conspiracy theories and Amelia Earhart is just one that I haven't really dived into and this was I mean it just really caught my attention and I really loved it and so I'm hoping to sit down and finish this one I'm liking the writing I have heard mixed reviews on it so I'm I'm eager to get to the parts with the murders and the killer I think that we're going to be seeing Bess 
pick up on a transmission on her shortwave radio that is connected to the seventh victim from what I can understand in the synopsis. So I can't wait till all of this ties in together. But like I said, the first chapter had me hooked. So I'm hoping to finish this one today. Tomorrow winter ween starts. So I want to be able to close out all of my books and start tomorrow for winter ween. I will keep you updated on Antioch. I mean, but look at this cover, how amazing it is. I love it. I'm obsessed. Hey guys, so I have reached the halfway mark on Antioch and I feel like it's the perfect time to update you on this book if I had a way to update you. Like I have, <laughs> that didn't make any sense, but it's not that I'm not understanding this book because it's an understandable book, but there's just things that I don't understand how we got to where we are. This woman, Bess, somehow gets wrapped up in this new kidnapping or this new girl that has been missing so they don't know if she's been kidnapped by Vlad the Impaler. And somehow this girl, this woman, Bess, or this lady, Bess, gets brought into this whole situation through a message that she hears on a shortwave radio. But at the same time, you're like wondering how this happened, how she got herself so wound up. I don't know, it's like, it's like circumstances that aren't believable. And then we have a lot of like dreams within the book that you know are dreams, but they feel more like fever dreams. Um, there's this detective, Howland, I think it's how you say it, it's Howland, that just like, I don't know, I really don't like him and I don't think you're supposed to like him. While I'm not having a hard time reading it, I'm having a hard time believing the things that are happening. And it's not even things that aren't believable, but they're just like, wait, what? How did we get here? What's going on? Um, they have just arrested a guy saying that he's Vlad the Impaler, but she's getting notes and messages that he's not the killer and I'm like, why is she getting these messages? I don't know, it's also weird. I hope it all makes sense at the end because right now I just feel like I've been thrown into the story that just doesn't have any context to it. If am I, I don't even know if I'm explaining myself. I don't know where this is headed. I hope it gets better, I hope it clears up, but that's really all the update that I have for this right now. I'm gonna go finish this and then I will tell you my thoughts at the end. Hey you guys, so I finished Antioch last night. I wanted to love this so much, but unfortunately it just did not work for me. I felt like at the end of the book, I was right back at the beginning. Really, you know like when you start a story and you're just confused because you just don't know what's going on. So like the beginning, it's almost like, you know, getting to know everything and trying to figure out what's gonna happen towards the end of the book. And then when you get to the end of the book, it's like, oh, okay, everything was worth it. With this one, I feel like I got to the end of the book and I was right back at page one wondering what the hell. I was just as lost as I was on page one. I feel like half of the things that we went through just made no sense. It had nothing to do with what was going on in the book. I felt like the mystery that we were trying to resolve never got resolved. In one of the parts, um, it was, I felt like it was headed in a direction where I was kind of like cringing and I was sort of like, oh, don't take it there. And it never took it there, but I feel like after I closed the book, I almost wish it would have taken it there because I would have liked the ending a little more. I mean, it still wouldn't have been a fantastic book, but I felt like there would have been some resolution. But it just, it never went anywhere, in my opinion. I felt like I just, I was left like scratching my head, looking off into space, like wondering what had I just read. I rarely say that I don't like books, but this is just one of those books that I did not like. I hate that I started off the year like this and I hate that I'm ending this video on such a negative note. For those of you that have been here a while or that really know me and my reading taste, you guys know that I rarely, rarely ever talk bad about a book. There's very few and far in between of books that I really talk bad about or that I just really don't end up liking. Um, so, it just, it pains me. It pains me to have to sit here and say I just did not like this book. You know what? I'm gonna end it in a positive. I love the cover to this book. Like, I absolutely adore the cover to this book. So, 
there you go. That's a positive of this book. So yeah, that is everything, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. I hope it helped you to pick some of these books up. Let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them, especially on Anne's Heel, because maybe I'm missing something. Maybe something flew over my head, which I doubt. This is a very polarizing book. It has, you know, mixed reviews on Goodreads. So if you've read it, let me know. Let's chat books in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. All these books will be available available on links in the description box. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!